Ethiopia, Guatemala, they both are Superbala. Russia, China, I kinda like ya, because I have adopted siblings from there. Wicked, wicked. Nailed it. That was a good shot. There's so much more love in her life because there are so many of these children that rely on her. She's maybe one of the most experienced people in California, if not the West Coast, and in adopting them internationally. What do you like about having lots of kids in your family? We can make a soccer team with a substitute, which is pretty sweet. Or we could just have a coach and then 11 players. Yeah, we'll figure it out when the contracts come. Uh, my name is Leslie Porter, and we now have 10 children. We have three sons that are biological sons that are 20, 17, and 14. And we have seven children that were adopted and from ages 11 down to four. Before we had three sons and we wanted a little girl. When we adopted Megan, it was, they were in very poor circumstances down there and we found out when we were there that there were very few people were coming to adopt children down there. And then once we saw the kids in the orphanage, then uh, we decided that we had room for more. The, the issue is, is that um, when the process slows down, the only ones that suffer are the children that need to be adopted. You have to provide financial information and, and cleared for child abuse, all kinds of information and be fingerprinted, what your family life was like. They do interviews together individually, visit and check to make sure it's a safe place for children, cleared for any infectious diseases, local social worker, an adoption agency, 30 or 40 pages information and be fingerprinted, work with U.S. immigration, doing paperwork for all three pieces matched with the child. You go through the country process, travel to the country and go through court and have an interview and, and get your child's visa to come back to the U.S. And this one, number one? Ah, you're killing me! Wait, two, four. This one looks easy, number four. Maybe we should trade them. Let's, can you Toby, oh, you already have the colors sorted out? Okay. A couple of our kids have some learning disabilities. In Los Altos schools, the good side is that they are excellent schools but they tend to be a little bit advanced. And so if you're struggling in school a little bit, I think it's kind of hard if you're reading at third grade level in third grade, but everybody else is reading at fifth grade level. We don't want any of our kids to feel bad and compare themselves too much. So homeschooling just gives it, allows everybody to kind of work at their own pace and feel good about where they're at. And you can tailor the curriculum specifically to what each individual's needs better. Plus with the newer boys, I think, like I said, it's a big adjustment to them just getting to know what it's like to be in a family and to bond with us. If they're away at school all day, then that's less opportunity to spend time and really trust us and get to know us as parents. There's been some political issues, both from the U.S. government and from the United Nations, UNESCO, and from the countries that have been that involved that have actually slowed down, slowed down the processes quite a bit. I think that they've put, and one in particular is the U.S. government, is join the Hague Convention, and they put in some policies and procedures that are meant to safeguard children, but I think then what actually happened is the whole process became more bureaucratic, more expensive, and longer. A lot of the reasons that I think that's dropped a lot are political, and that there's still millions of children around the world that need families, and it's I'm not sure what the right solution is, but I think I know from as each adoption we've been do, adopting for about eight years now, it keeps getting longer and more difficult and more paperwork's required. And some of the things don't really make a lot of sense. Like every single time we've adopted, we've had to go to U.S. immigration and be fingerprinted. And then you go through this long process of waiting for your finger to get an appointment, waiting for your fingerprints to clear. And it's like your fingerprints don't change. So why do we have to go and be fingerprinted? eight different times and pay $80 per person to be fingerprinted. And all these fees start adding up. Um, and now there's, there's a lot of documentation requirements for China. We had to have every document, which we had about 30, you had to go and have them notarized, so a, a U.S. notary. Then you had to go to the U state capital 
and they look up the notary and validate that yes, that person's a real notary. And then you had to take it to the China consulate, verify the state seal was correct. So they just add all these layers of bureaucracy that doesn't make us any better parents. It just, I think, makes the appearance that somebody thinks that they're making the process more valid. Knowing that my parents have adopted those and they're now my siblings, it feels, uh, I'm very proud of my parents and it, it feels, uh, I feel as though what my parents are doing is very important. I think it's impacted that impacted them significantly. They were able to go to an orphanage and see how kids there live. When we first arrived at the airport home with the new kids, there were all 12 of us there at the airport. And when we got into the elevator all together to go down to the parking lot, I was like, wow, there are a lot of people in our family. But she wants to make that a anchor event. You know, when the, when the new child comes, everyone comes and greets the greets the children at the airport. When we travel, we did go to Hawaii earlier this year, and we, we travel and we're going through the airport and through security and stuff. Uh, it, it is a lot of kids to be taking off their shoes and getting all their stuff on the conveyor belt. And Tulum, I didn't check his backpack before we got there, and they, comf they took it. Luckily, it was just a water bottle, but I was like, oh, shoot, what did he put in his backpack? But. Um, so there's, and we, you know, and then especially in that situation, we, we do attract a lot of attention. That when you pick up a new child, especially the, not a baby, they don't know you and you don't know them, and it, you're, you're kind of wondering if it's all going to work out well and stuff. But I, what I tend to try and think about is, you know, if I was going back now, and I, over time, you love them just as much as any of your other kids. And so I try and keep that in mind. It's like, oh, you're in it two from now. This is going to be my precious as any of my other children. So it feels kind of strange at first, and I know it feels strange for them. And you, but I just think instead of being worried about, does this child have any issues? Do they have learning disabilities? Do they have whatever. I just try and think about, wow, I know that I'm going to just love this child. 